Stranger Things, The Rosetta Stone, and Morris Code are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is July 15th, 2022. It is the 196th day of the year. We got 169 days left. It is the 28th Friday in the 29th week and the 25th day of summer. You got 69 days until fall. If today is your birthday, you're still a cancer. Today is National Pet Fire Safety Day. Yes, they made a day of that. On July 15th, we're reminded to consider our pets when planning fire routes and safety in the home. Our pets are as much a part of the family as any other member. This day, I, you know, I don't agree with that. I love my pets. I really do. And I take care of my pig and we got dogs. I got a rabbit that lives in my office. But you know what? The kids come before the animals, L way before the animals. But that's just me. My wife might see a little different. This day stresses the importance of protecting them. Taking preventable measures now can both save your home and your pets. Sometimes our pets can cause fires if we don't take proper precautions. American Kennel Club, in association with ADT Security Services, declared National Pet Fire Safety Day in 2009 to educate owners. All right, let's see what else. July 15th has given us. 1741, Alexei Cherkov sights land in southeast Alaska. He sends men ashore in a longboat, making them the first Europeans to visit Alaska. One thing leads to another, and cruise ships start taking drunk retirees to the shores of Alaska. 1799, the Rosetta Stone is found in the Egyptian village of Rosetta by French Captain Pierre-Francois Bouchard during Napoleon's Egyptian campaign. So while Napoleon was in Egypt, he wasn't really having a good time. Things weren't going his way, and his troops were in the town of Rosetta, modern-day Rashid. Well, Napoleon's forces were basically getting ready to defend Rosetta, and they were strengthening the walls or whatever, and they happened to come across this stone that was kind of being used as general building material, like it was part of a wall. It wasn't on display or anything like that. It was just like another brick in the wall, and obviously the Egyptian who put it there originally didn't know what it was, didn't care, and just used it as part of a wall. Well, Captain Pierre-Francois Bouchard gets wind of this and goes and checks it out, and realizing that this thing is something special and has some historical significance, and they should probably excavate it carefully. And they did. And they took it into their custody, I guess you could say. Well, the Rosetta Stone was broken down into three different languages. One was an Egyptian script, which they originally thought was Syriac. There was hieroglyphics, at the time only used by like priests and pharaohs and stuff like that. And then there was some ancient Greek. Now, prior to this, hieroglyphics were a total mystery. They didn't know what they meant, didn't know what they were. Nobody had a clue. Well, now they could figure it out because they knew about Syriac and they also knew about ancient Greek. So they started comparing them because they realized that these were the same things just written in different languages. So they basically were able to translate like the ancient Greek to the hieroglyphics and figure out what was going on. Well, then they could unlock other knowledge and figure out other hieroglyphics and it kind of opened up the world. And that's how the Rosetta Stone kind of became a phrase or a saying for unlocking knowledge and translation. They got an app called Rosetta Stone that'll teach you a language. Since 1802, the Rosetta Stone has been kept in the British Museum in London. And way back then, they built its own room, uh, partly because the original room they had for it almost collapsed at the weight of that and some of the other Egyptian artifacts that they had there. It has only been out of the gallery that they built for it one time since it was originally put there, and that was during World War I when they were afraid they were going to get bombed. Egypt has actually asked for it back in the past, and... The British keep turning them down. They even asked if they could borrow it for a couple of years to put it on display in Egypt, and they turned them down for that one, too. 1806, the Pike Expedition. United States Army Lieutenant Zebulon Pike begins his expedition from Fort Belafonte near St. Louis, Missouri to explore the West. 1823, fire destroys the ancient Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls in Rome, Italy. 1834, the Spanish Inquisition is officially disbanded after nearly 356 years. Uh, the Spanish Inquisition was, you know, I just want to call it disgusting because it was torture confessions out of people and accuse people of heresy and all this other stuff. And they just they were they were religious terrorists, in my opinion. 
Now, this was all the rage back in the day. There's been other inquisitions, but the Spanish Inquisition was probably the one that went on the longest and did the most damage to the local populace. They had the Catholic Inquisition, the Roman Inquisition, the Portuguese Inquisition. 1862, the American Civil War. The CSS Arkansas, the most effective ironclad on the Mississippi River, battles with the Union Navy ships commanded by Admiral David Fergut, severely damaging three ships and sustaining heavy damage herself. The encounter changed the complexion of the warfare on the Mississippi and help reverse rebel fortunes on the river in the summer of 1862. 1870, the Reconstruction Era of the United States, Georgia becomes the last of the former Confederate states to be readmitted into the Union. 1910, in his book Clinical Psychiatry, Emil Kreplin gives the name to Alzheimer's disease, naming after his colleague Alois Alzheimer. 2003, AOL Time Warner disbands Netscape. The Mozilla Foundation is established on the same day. I use Netscape all the time. In the early days, I hated Microsoft, uh, their Internet Explorer. I loved Netscape. 2012, South Korean rapper Psy releases his hit single, Gangnam Style. Remember that? Gangnam Style? Oh my god, it's like one of the most viewed YouTube videos of all time. That video right now has 4,477,317,000 views. I've been at this like six years now. I haven't even cracked 500 million on my whole channel. This one and my main channel, World According to Briggs. That one video has probably made it to where that guy never has to work again. Just the AdSense alone, which are those ads that pay us at the beginning of all the videos you guys watch and stuff like that. Just a low estimate. He's made at least $25 million off that video alone. Insane. Premiered on July 15th, 2016, Stranger Things. I love this show. I've only watched, I haven't watched last season, I should say, which is out right now on Netflix. I gotta watch it. Such a good show. After a young boy goes missing in the 1980s, his friends, family, and local police encounter a strange phenomenon as they try and find him. The show's first and second seasons were nominated for five Primetime Emmy Awards. The creator of the show, Ross and Matt Duffer, have stated that it's heavily influenced by films of Steven Spielberg and novels by Stephen King. Born on July 15, 1924, Jeremiah Denton. He was a United States Rear Admiral and Republican politician who served Alabama as the United States Senator from 1981 to 1987. Now, in June of 1943, he entered the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, and graduated three years later, thus beginning his 34-year naval career. He spent almost eight years as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam during the Vietnam War. In a televised press conference that he later said he was forced to do by the North Vietnamese captors, he repeatedly spelled out torture by blinking his eye in Morse code. Their whole propaganda thing in Vietnam, North Vietnam, I should say, was not, not good. They let him do that. That, and then some of the other like news conferences they forced these guys to do, you could see the shadow of a guy pointing a gun to his head while he was talking. Ridiculous. Denton died of complications from a heart ailment at a hospice in Virginia Beach on March 28, 2014. He was 89 years old. He is buried at Arlington National Cemetery with his wife, Jane. Died on July 15, 1948, another military guy, John J. Pershing, decorated army officer who served in World War I. He was the first man to be promoted while still living to the rank of General of the Armies. Before fame, he attended the U.S. Military Academy at West Point because the quality of education there was much better than anything he could find in his native Missouri. Pershing Square in downtown Los Angeles was named after him. On July 15, 1948, General Pershing died of coronary artery disease and congestive heart failure at 87 at Walter Reed General Hospital in Washington, D.C., which was his home after 1944. He lived on the grounds of Walter Reed for four years. He lay in state at the United States Capitol Rotunda, and following a state funeral, he was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.